Good morning, Greater New York Dental <clears throat> residents and professional staff. My name is Adam Dreyfus. If you don't know, uh, I think we've already met before, but wanted to first say on from myself, Dental Services Group, Dennis Urban, and Jessica, Jessica Respondak, we first want to say thank you for your continued support. And we also want to make sure that everyone is staying healthy and safe. And please keep your distance and wash your hands at a constant rate. With that being said, we always look forward to your feedback. Please do not hesitate to reach out to myself with any comments that you might have when it comes to this course or anything that DSG is doing to help support you and your program. Please know that we have <clears throat> created a dedicated website for all this educational material. You can visit it at dentalservices.net backslash resident dash edu where you can find all the upcoming courses all the recordings and also additional educational material without further ado i'd like to turn it over to dennis urban who's going to be starting our series on getting on the edge on removables dennis take it away all righty good morning everybody and thank you adam and thank you jessica and thank you everyone for being here so early in the morning uh, to get educated so uh this this series uh getting the edge on removables is going to cover uh, some analog aspects of the uh, denture technology and digital aspects. And today we'll be focusing on both of those and on the digital side, we'll be focusing on the printed denture. So we're gonna talk about workflows. I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more on some of the tools I mentioned in my earlier presentation on back to basics and denture uh, fabrication. And we're gonna elaborate more on what we spoke about in those basics also. So you might see a few of the same slides but I'm gonna elaborate and apply them over to the digital side also, and we'll correlate that over to the digital side. So, uh, and we'll do a slight review on that also. So, um, and uh, our second part, when we start the second part next month, it's gonna include the milled part of digital denture te technology with a couple of different systems. And that's gonna include also partial dentures. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about digital partial dentures. We do have a separate series for partial dentures, but I wanted to add the digital aspect of it also. So, so let's get started. Uh, here's the outline of the presentation. We're going to talk about denture technology, looking back and moving forward. The tools of record taking for digital and analog full dentures. Reduction of chair time and adjustments on removables due to um, digital technology. Digital versus analog full denture techniques. And we'll talk about workflow and how we can cut back a little bit on workflow and, and chair time on the digital time, digital aspect of it. Occlusal schemes, including lingualized occlusion and centric occlusion. Case design, milling, and printing. So today we're going to talk about printing techniques. The next part we'll talk about milling and patient acceptance. And we'll talk about how patient acceptance has increased dramatically with, uh, with digital dentures. And of course, communication with us at the dental laboratory uh, so you can have a successful case. So I always call it the great challenge because you know it took a while for uh, uh, digital technology and dentures to come about in a way that's been productive and successful. And uh, so a lot of uh, people hadn't accepted it in the last couple of years, we've come a long way. So uh, especially with printed denture technology. If you asked me about maybe about a year, year and a half ago, if I liked printed dentures, I would say, no, they didn't look, they didn't look uh, aesthetic. Uh, they weren't, uh, they didn't have longevity. They attracted bacteria. They, they didn't have flexural strength or high impact resistance. But now we have all that with uh, uh, printed digital dentures. So we'll talk about that in a little while. So looking back at digital uh, at the denture technology, we come a long way from materials like these, like Vulcanite, and you see George Washington's dentures. I always show those in my, my, my presentations, just to take us back a little bit. And then looking forward, we've come a long way with materials on, on a removable side, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as opposed to what we were using years ago. Even, even in the last five years with uh, acrylics and denture teeth uh, we, and materials that uh, used, we use to fabricate dentures, we've come a long way with those types of materials. So from here, we came from here, and now we have highly aesthetic teeth with unsurpassed denture-based materials. Look at these denture teeth that we have now on the market. They look like real teeth. And the tooth morphology is so natural and the posteriors look like crowns, anteriors look like a layered porcelain restoration. So really nice aesthetics and wear factors on these denture teeth. So, and now we can match the existing gingiva on a patient on dentures by using a uh, denture based stain. So we get a picture of the patient's natural gingiva and we can replicate it like we did here. So it's a whole technique that we, we use that really uh, comes across in a natural way and aesthetic for the patient. And we can mimic natural gingiva anatomy on wax ups too and triants. 
we get a pic picture of the patient's gingiva, as you see here. And then we can transfer that over to the final denture. And we could do the same thing on, on the digital side also. If we have to characterize a digital denture, we can do, uh, we can also. And now we can print and mill accurate and aesthetic dentures with amazing fit, form, and function. So this is a picture of the Densply uh, uh, Lucitone printed denture here. We'll get, we're gonna elaborate on that a little bit more as we move through the presentation. And this, these are the mill dentures. This is uh, some of the mill dentures I made. You'll see some pictures. Um, and uh, what we do with, with these, we'll actually bond in denture teeth to those denture bases. This is actually the Keystone Key Mill product. And we'll talk about that also in our second series. Where are we going in denture technology? Well, the United States Dental Laboratories are seeing a dramatic increase in full denture cases, implant cases, and partial dentures. So it's more income opportunities for dentists, dental laboratories, dental material manufacturers, and all around uh, in the industry. So come a long way. And you know, I remember you always saw years ago at dental shows and um, dental webinars and seminars was uh, in, uh, implants and crown and bridge. And now we see a lot on, on, on the removable side because there's a lot of opportunities there on the removable side. And that includes overdentures, uh, you know, hybrid type cases and those types of cases also. Uh, so there's a lot of income opportunities and not, not only income opportunities, it's what's best for the patient. We have to evaluate the, what's best for the patient uh, by looking at uh, what their history is orally and uh, what they, they, they've had problems with over the years. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So more people need dentures now than ever before. And the industry predicts a tremendous growth now through 2050. So uh, experienced denture, tech, denture technicians are the guides for dentists and patient success in denture processes. And this is by a quote by Dr. Stephen Wagner, who's a prosthodontist and was um, uh, really uh, one of the innovators with uh, Densefly, with that Densefly denture, uh, printed denture. And I was at a meeting uh, back about six months ago, right before COVID, like maybe longer than that, uh, back in January. And Dr. Christian Coachman was speaking and he said, you know, professionals who understand dentures are the ones who understand smile design because we really have to study uh, occlusion and uh, uh, occlusal schemes and, and aesthetics. And, and we, we apply that over to a, a denture where we get a, a model on an articulator with an upper and lower model. We have a 40 millimeters of intraocclusal space that we have to fill. We have to understand smile design and we have to utilize those tools and natural land, anatomical landmarks to achieve those aesthetic and functional dentures. But we have to move in the right direction with digital and analog. We have to apply those sciences from the analog side over the digital, but we really have to go in the, in the same direction. Uh, and digital is advancing and evolving very rapidly, you know, on a regular basis. So let's talk a little bit about the digital transformation. We, you know, we, I talk, I, I call it the three P's, preparedness, production, and profitability in a digital world. You know, we really need to know the science behind what we're doing, both in, in the operatory and in the laboratory. We'll talk a little bit about uh, operatory um, procedures in a little while. So we want to create a more personal and predictable service with digital dentures. We want to build an intelligent design platform. Engage your patients. Uh, uh, we, we, our DSG, we empower our technicians to, to learn the latest technology. We're constantly training and getting our technicians certified. We want to reinvent the productivity and clinical processes also with digital dentures. And you want to optimize your operations through, through scanning and digital technology and transform your digital offerings. So there's a lot we can, we can talk about here. Uh, we'll, we'll elaborate more on this on uh, further uh, you know, presentations also. But, um, you know, preparing the digital technology, you know, again, I mentioned earlier, you want to engage your patients. You can now deliver a personalized, rich, connected successes with consistent and positive patient experiences with digital ventures. And what does that mean? Uh, we talk about digital dentures, how, how we actually elevate the, uh, the comfort level of clinicians because uh, clinicians in the past felt like there was too much, there were too many adjustments in the, in the operatory, too many visits with the, uh, the, the denture patients, and there were a lot of problems. But now with digital denture technology, it's so predictable and it raises that confidence level and the success level. And I talked about we empower our, dental, our technicians throughout DSG, keep them up with the fast moving clinical accounts, efficiently collaborating with you and the, and the, and the dentist and, and our technicians and we, to anticipate and meet customer demands. And we wanna optimize, you wanna optimize your operations, increase the, increase the flow of information across your entire operation, better manage your resources and keep your practice and process, practice processes synchronized across all boundaries. And uh, you know, I know it's all mostly resonance here, but just think about that when you get into your own practice and uh, you really want to optimize your operations when you do. So, and then transform your digital offerings, expand the reach of your capabilities using digital channels, 
uh, education, uh, training, uh, scanning, anticipate customer needs. And we can do that on many aspects with digital technology and understand how your products are used and quickly and develop and improve your services. So uh, um, this is all in encompassed into a successful uh, digital platform. But it all starts with communication, communication with you, the patient, us at the laboratory and planning these cases. So um, digital and analog, we still need to utilize the same fundamental prosthodontic processes to make a digital denture as we always have. The clinician still needs to communicate and provide the technician with the necessary information for a functional case. And this is why I'm talking about the analog aspect of it also today. And we're gonna do some correlation between the two. Digital denture technology is still evolving, as I mentioned earlier, and is improving at a rapid pace. Look what I mentioned earlier, as far as the printed technology, we've come a long, long way in just a year and a half on printed technology. And the basic knowledge of prosthodontic principles, including providing accurate impressions, is even more important in the, in the digital world because many details can be now seen on a large screen, which could not otherwise be detected before. And dentists still need to understand the importance of capturing accurate maxillomandibular records vertical dimension and centric relation. And technicians need to continue to analyze ridge relationships and then select appropriate anterior and posterior teeth for the desired occlusal scheme. And we'll talk about selecting teeth in a little while. And with many of the software platforms that are out there now, actually the, the digital aspect and the digital platform select those teeth for us by looking at the, uh, the arch and the anatomical landmarks and the articulation. So let's look at patient expectations. The dentist should meet the mind of the patient for, before he or she meets the mouth. I love that, uh, that quote here. And, and what I'm talking about, we really need to talk to the patient and evaluate what their problems were, what they anticipate, what their expectations are, and are they realistic expectations? So we always mention, I always mention about the preclinical interview. Ask the patient, what are your specific concerns, limitations? How long have you been a dentalist? How many dentures have you had since you have tooth loss? And how did you lose your teeth? Is periodontal disease, how did you lose them? So, and when was the last time your dentures were relined? And I see dentures to patients wearing dentures for five, 10 years and never get them checked. So, and uh, have you ever considered implants? So some of the questions to ask the patients and the, for the complete denture checklist, you wanna hear about patient complaints, the hitch history of dentalism, the support factor on these dentures and the stability, uh, the, the, were they retentive? And look at the floor of the mouth and tongue room and position on a lower denture because that's mainly what you have a lot of problems with. There's a lower denture that moves around. The tongue is possibly too big, pushing the denture out in the mouth. Patients biting their tongue, biting their cheeks. We really wanna design a good, accurate denture. And in this part, and in, in that aspect, we might actually design maybe an implant denture, over denture with at least two implants on, the, on a mandible. So, and then we have to look into uh, all the anatomical landmarks too, the border extensions. And we have to look at your center regulation, your VDO, check phonetics, aesthetics, occlusion, and of course the opposing dentition. So this is a great checklist to um, denture patients, but I don't see it applied all the time. You know, even working with clinicians, I don't see this applied. And for a successful denture, I do believe you need to uh, implement and utilize this checklist. So, so let's get into best practices with full dentures. And uh, I'm gonna go about over some of the things I mentioned earlier in my earlier presentations, and we'll talk about uh, the digital platform. So. Again, we talked about communication. We have all the tools for communication at our fingertips here. There's no reason why we can't plan a successful case with the communication between us at the laboratory and you, the clinician. So we depend on you, the clinician, for your clinical knowledge and your training, the assessment of the patient, appropriate treatment planning, detailed information on the Rx form. And I talked about this, you know, when I go into the, uh, into the resident in, in hospitals and uh, visit the residents and give seminars with Adam, we talked about giving us at the laboratory a detailed uh, Rx form with uh, a lot of information on it, not just a shade and a couple of words. We really want to need that information to, to really have a successful case. And we'd love to get digital photography and we always use quality materials and that's important. So um, I, every once in a while we get uh, uh, requests for maybe uh, inferior materials. We don't use inferior materials. Everything's FDA approved and high quality materials and that DSG. And as far as digital photography goes, you know, we like digital photography. I've, I've seen as so far as if we have a problem with um, uh, a patient's bite or occlusion, I'll get a little video clip of how the patient goes into excursion, where they're having these problems. And that helps us out a lot too. So we, there's a lot we can do especially with an iPhone. We can do a lot with an iPhone and to send us the file. So, 
And on our part, communication with a certified dental technician, you depend on our technical expertise, uh, knowledge and, and procedures and materials, appropriate feedback to you on, on impressions, bite registration, shade, and we want the appropriate case planning with the clinician. If it's an implant case, the clinician and the, and the uh, surgeon and possibly the periodontist. So, uh, and of course, digital photography and the use of quality materials. So corroborating credentialism, you know, more than 36 million, and this has to be updated. This is a slide I think from 2007, I believe. Uh, there's some of the information from 2015, but I think there's more now, more than 36 million Americans have no, no teeth. And 90% of those Americans have, have dentures. So and 90 percent of denture patients are unhappy with the fit of their dentures. So uh, that's why it's important to follow the protocol, use the correct materials uh, on these types of cases, and evaluate whether the patient can, can uh, has enough bone density to, to get an implant denture. You know, especially on a lower. Right now, that's pretty much the norm on a lower denture is, is at least two implants for an overdenture. So uh, you know, we need to look at those facts also. So some of the denture challenges for the clinician. You know, dissatisfied, frustrated patients. You know. You know, we're in a laboratory making these cases, a lot of times on chair side, but you are the ones who have to face the patients. So it's, it's hard sometimes when you have something that's, that's not fitting correctly. Uh, it's difficult to provide a good fitting denture, long turnaround time because of adjustments and significant chair time re re reduces your return on investment. And sometimes I see five to seven appointments to see the, see the final denture. You know, when I'm going around the country training, I, I asked clinicians, why, what do you think that is? And I think it's because of not taking the time to evaluate and getting the correct information on the onset of the case. So, uh, and sometimes it's two or three, maybe four appointments just to adjust the denture, you know, and uh, uh, for, for sore spots. So let's uh, elaborate a little bit more on problems with full dentures, compromised stability, especially on lower cases. And <clears throat> we're finding even with upper dentures now on the digital side, that the fit and function are so great and of course of the, uh, the um, accuracy of scanning and the fit is amazing. Sometimes we're even eliminating a post dam on the uppers because the fit is so good. So uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, some of the other problems are poor neuromuscular coordination with occlusion. Um, many times uh, I've seen the, the improper occlusal schemes you know, on, on these patients. You really wanna make sure the patients can tolerate certain occlusal schemes. Um, low tolerance of mucosal tissue on a removal acrylic base uh, especially with patients who have an aller allergic reaction to uh, acrylics and or they're not stable. You know, the teeth aren't set correctly on a ridge. Now, not sent, set on a central fossa, uh, a cent central, uh, not set on the crest of the ridge. And um, you want to make sure that central fossa of the tooth is also on the ridge, on posterior teeth. And the patient's desire for more stability and comfort. And the comfort level of the dentist is compromised due to excessive chair time. We, we spoke about that earlier. So but a lot of good points here on the, some of the problems and the goals of the final outcome. We want to create natural aesthetics. You know, we want to enhance facial appearance, compensate for that lost soft tissue, enhance the function with the right occlusal scheme, which is very, very important. And create a denture with longevity, impact resistance, and bacteria resistance. I mentioned earlier about bacteria, bacteria uh, uh, with uh, printed dentures a few years back. I mean, it was terrible. You know, the, the two, two or three years ago, you saw a printed denture that was in the mouth for a little bit of a while, a little, even a short period of time, and it attracted a lot of bacteria. But now we don't have that problem. You know, and then the elimination or reduction of written adjustments on occlusion and sore spots. That eliminates a lot of chair time. So pretty much everything can be done in that four, those four or five visits to making a denture, and then the outcome would be successful. And some of the common mistakes in full dentures, poor treatment planning, distorted impressions. I think that's still not the number one phone call we make in the laboratory to the clinicians is about impressions. Inaccurate master models, insufficient occlusal records, and the poor choice of materials. So those are the common mistakes and uh, failure factors on making uh, fabricating full dentures. So let's uh, look at the uh, best practices now with full dentures. Um, we'll talk, we'll go through step by step. I'm even going to show a little short video clips, short video clips uh, on a couple of tools of, I use when uh, uh, taking uh, uh, occlusal records and bite registration. So, clinical pro, pro protocol and removables. Usually, the first visit is that preliminary impression. <clears throat> the second visit is going to be that custom tray final impression. Third visit is going to be a bite registration or occlusal records. And that fourth visit, tooth setup and a wax try in and the fifth visit, that final insertion. And please note that a visit can be eliminated if a functional impression is taking, taken inside an occlusal rim base plate. 
and the bite registration is taken at the second visit. So we can cut these down to four visits. And I've even seen on digital adventures, uh, cutting, cutting it down to even three visits. So, uh, and we'll talk about that a little more when I get to the print adventure. So best practices, traditional full dentures, even with the preliminary impression, we really like to get a good accurate impression. We want to make sure all the anatomical landmarks are captured in the impression, you know, the hammy, on the upper, the hamulal knots, the retromolar pads on the, on the lower, all the peripheries. This is going to enable us to make a good, accurate custom tray so you can get a good, accurate final impression. And that second visit with the custom tray impression, you know, we love to get cases out of border mold. I still see cases come in where those cases aren't border mold and we don't have an accurate impression of the periphery. So what you want to do is place that adhesive on the borders of the tray and border mold. Add some heavy body VPS material or monophase material on the borders, insert it into the mouth, um, massage around the musculature of the mouth and the cheeks, and then take it into the patient's mouth and then come over and put adhesive in the tray and cover it with, come over with a light to medium body uh, uh, and pressure material or VPS material. There are a lot of materials out there. I still say vinyl polysiloxane is one of the more accurate ones. Uh, I still see rubber-based impressions, which are fine, uh, but uh, PVS is one of the, uh, or VPS is one of the best. So, And then uh, we wanna make sure we capture everything in that final impression also, anatomical landmarks, uh, retromolar pads, hamulal notches, and freedoms. So this is one of the tools I'd like to for you to use if you can. Uh, on this, I know not everybody has this. It's a it's a papillometer, and what this does uh, when we get these final impressions back to the laboratory, it'll enable us to contour a bite register, a bite rim for you. So you know, it's, it eliminates a lot of time for you cutting back the wax or adding wax to the occlusal rim. And what it does, you place it on the papilla, and for instance, this is when the, uh, the mouth is closed here. Uh, this is about 17 millimeters. So we're probably gonna add a few millimeters onto that. And that's gonna be where our incisal edge uh, um, ends up here. I have a short video uh, here from Dr. Frank Lucelli. He's, he's, he, he's with Ivoclar and it's a great little video I'm gonna show here. First thing I want to do is open up mic, please. And we're gonna take the patient's uh, denture out. And I'm going to take the uh, papillometer. It's a, a, a device that's going to help us uh, give the, the uh, lip line uh, communication to the laboratory. And it has a little device in the back of here that's going to rest against the anterior papilla. And where this meets the gauge here, that would be at the zero point. In other words, where it rests on the incisal papilla, there'll be our zero point. And when we press this into the patient's mouth, whatever reading we get here, will be interpreted as a number of millimeters between the patient's anterior papilla and the patient's lip as it's recorded. Now we're gonna to go to the patient and I'm gonna put this uh, gently under Mike's lip here. And again, resting this against the, the patient's anterior papilla, we're gonna let the lip just very gently and gracefully uh, assume its resting position. And as I look at that, uh, from my position here, I'm going to measure that at about 14 millimeters. Now I'm going to ask Mike to, um, that's going to be the patient's low lip line. And I'm going to ask Mike to give it a, a nice casual smile. Now we're about nine millimeters. We're going to consider that as our patient's high lip line. So we got a difference between low lip line, high lip line of five millimeters plus. And uh, give, give me a little more of a smile, Mike. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I'll put that measurement around eight millimeters. First, we're going to mark a dot right in the midline position of our, of our uh, maxillary cast on the land area. Uh, and again, in the laboratory, they're going to also have a papillometer. And what they'll do is they'll rest it uh, gently against the anterior papilla of the cast. And then we're going to take a measurement from this dot down to the 14 millimeters, which was the patient's low lip line. And then we'll read our, our gauge, which measures about, oh, 33 millimeters. We'll mark that down now as our low lip line equal 33 millimeters. And we know that our high lip line, uh, when the patient smiled, measured it at eight millimeters. 
So there's a difference of six millimeters. So we could say our high lip line equals 27 millimeters, again, measured on our, our scale. So that when the, when the uh, laboratory is ready to fabricate the wax rim, uh, they will fabricate, the, they'll preset this to 33 millimeters. And then when they fabricate the wax rim, they'll make the wax rim at, at that particular length. And then when they're ready to do the setting of the teeth and uh, they want to do their final wax up, they'll preset this to 27 millimeters. And they'll make sure that the gingival wax up uh, covers at least that much of the, of the tooth structure. So it's a nice means of communication, some of this personal or clinical criteria to the laboratory uh, to help in the process of setting teeth as well as the wax rim length. So this, yeah, it's an excellent tool. I love this tool and, it, and it, it'll cut down chair time for, uh, for you in, in the operatory also by allowing us to contour these rooms correctly. So we're going to get these, uh, you know, contour these rooms. We're going to uh, uh, manufacture them in the laboratory um, and then we're going to send them back to you and you can take a nice occlusal record. So, and we don't have to go into all these details here, but, you know, on an average, we're talking about from periphery on an upper uh, to the incisal edge of about 22 millimeters uh, on an upper and on a lower, it's about 18 millimeters. So, uh, and, but the important thing is, even when you're taking these occlusal records, we at the laboratory, we need some information from you. And that's the midline, the cuspid lines, the high lip line, you know, and the, all of the smile line and, upper, uh, and uh, this will enable us to get correct uh, information and to setting denture teeth. And even with digital dentures, we need this information too, because the scans of this, these uh, indications will go into the software and help us decide what kind of, what size teeth to use. So, and then on the fourth visit, you'll get your tooth try-in uh, with a nice setup here uh, to try it in. And if it's approved, we can go to a finish on the fifth visit. But on the fifth visit, you check for fit, form, and function, check for pressure spots, and equilibrate the inclusion. Now, a traditional workflow we mentioned earlier at the dental laboratory, you know, first step is for the preliminary, preliminary impression and then make a custom tray. For that final impression and make that occlusal rim, articulate on it and set the uh, teeth and send it to you for the fourth visit in, in the operatory. And then we get back to uh, laboratory and process and finish. And the only thing different that we're doing on the digital side now, we're still following any steps from, uh, and it, this could be five steps too, because I have the custom tray in, this, in the first step, but we can cut this down to four. But when we go to set up the case, when at now scanning the final impression or model and scanning the bite registration at the laboratory, and we design and print a try in so instead of getting this, what you had normally and what you're used to, you're gonna get something like this. This is a printed monolithic try-in, which you could fit and you know, it should fit like the final denture. Uh, the only thing you can't stick a hot spatula in there and start moving teeth around. So you have to get used to that. You know, and I, I had to get used to it because I do a lot of anatomical and characterized wax ups. And so we can still do that on these, but it, you know, we still can't move teeth around, but we can check the occlusion and phonetics Make sure the aesthetics are pleasing to the patient. And <clears throat> same thing on the clinical side, you know, that fourth visit, instead of that tooth, wax tooth trying, you're gonna get that printed trying as we see here. And it's gonna look like something like this when you're trying it in. So you're gonna check, you know, if midline's okay, make sure the, uh, the fit is good. If you have problems with occlusion, you can always grind on this um, uh, printed trying and take a new bite registration. If the midline is off, you can always mark the midline with, in a, with a Sharpie on the denture or tell us what areas if there's like a reverse smile or the teeth are hanging too low on the posterior, you can mark that and we can rescan that at the laboratory and merge it in with the original file and it'll be making an automatic adjustment. And then we can either print a new try-in for you or we can go to a finish. So a lot of great tools. So what about intraoral scanning of full arch cases? Well, you know what? It's possible and there's been successes with it. It's still evolving. Scanning is possible, but still not perfect in a lot of uh, you know, areas. I mean, additional steps must be taken and case selection is critical. You can use an indelible pencil to help with the stitching issues when scanning a particular arch where there are very few landmarks for reference. That reference, that helps out. In cases with, cases with tissue texture, we have a, a more difficulty in scanning, you know, so it'll be, uh, so um, it's, make sure all, you capture all those anatomical landmarks when you're scanning. So that one of the successful uh, doctors who have been successful with dental scan strategies are, is Dr. LaRusso. You know, and there's an article on, if you can look online, Dr. LaRusso, uh, professor uh, in, in dental scan strategy, that comes up, you'll come up with an article for his design on optimal scan experiences for dental patients. And basically what he did, 
he was a, a, there was a directional aspect. So he would start from here, as you see on the right side of the upper denture, he'd go from the right to the left along the crest of the ridge. Then he'll go on the periphery from the left to the right. And then uh, on the other side, from the right to the left, then he'll go into the palatal area and he'll have a directional preference, even on a lower, you know, they're starting at the, uh, uh, the, the buckle of you near know, the retromolar pad. And he's very successful for edentulous scans, you know, and, um, you know, on the other hand, the Journal of Prostodontic, Prostodontic Research uh, in February, 2020, they did, did um, a study too. And then they, they did an in vivo feasibility study uh, with uh, optical impress, uh, impression taking or uh, scanning, digital scanning of 29 patients. And their conclusion was, Within the limitations of the present study, the investigative scanners were not able to current, currently to re fully replace a conventional impression for the fabrication of a complete denture. So they weren't too successful, but I'm not too sure what kind of scanners they use, but there are some great scanners. And while we're on the scanning subject here, you know, DSG will train you on, on scanning and utilizing these scanners also. And this is direction, uh, directional uh, scanning that they had, they did with the Journal of Prostodontic Research. So it could have had something to do with the direction they were scanning it. It was total, totally different than Dr. Lewis's. So. But um, so let's get back to, uh, you know, additional dentures here and eliminating one important appointment. You know, so if you can't, you know, can't do a digital scan, what we can do is eliminate one appointment by taking a wash impression and a bite registration with the existing dentures. That's if the existing dentures are in good shape. So this works out really well. You can border mold it again. You can cut back the borders a little if you have to, but you don't really need to. Maybe put a little uh, uh, heavy body material on the periphery. Take a nice wash impression and take it by registration. Let's watch a little video here. Quick video of how this clinician is scanning. The dentures on the tissue side and on the tooth side. So we got that nice scan, of the upper and lower denture here, and nice impression. And that denture can be given back to the patient and you can just send that STL to us at the, at the uh, laboratory and you just eliminated a, a, a visit, which is great. And you can also do that with a functional impression of bite registration. You can take an impression inside that uh, uh, custom trade material that we have here, take a bite registration, scan it and send the file to the laboratory. So really good stuff. So. Let's see how much time we have here. We're in good shape here. Uh, let's, I'm just gonna go over uh, briefly analog denture setups because it's gonna correlate over to the digital side. So the aesthetic denture teeth is very time consuming and we wanna make sure we have to we capture all the uh, information on the occlusal rim. So we wanna make sure the articulation is correct. And what's great about digital is that we have a, a digital articulation with a, a fully adjustable articulator on a screen. So I know we don't use fully adjustable articulators or semi-adjustable all the time, but this particular case, we have a semi-adjustable articulator. We want to make sure it's set on the articulator to the, the right occlusal level. So I have a rubber band around the incisal pin going around to the posterior region. So that's going to be your occlusal plane. We set, start setting our denture teeth. And we want to follow that occlusal plane. And we have a nice full upper and full lower setup. We equilibrate it. Uh, check out working and balancing and uh, over jet and we're good to go. So and you can wax it up. So, and then we're going to send a nice waxed contour for the try in uh, as you saw earlier. So, but how do we select those anterior teeth? You know, so uh, that's been a problem over the years for a lot of technicians and clinicians. So we have to determine the mold. We look at the shape of the arch. That's how I do it. I look at the shape of the arch. If it's a square arch, it's a square tooth, a square central. Is a square tapering, it's a square tapering central. Uh, or if we get a study model from the existing denture of the patient, that works also. And then we can also measure the cuspid lines over the millimeter ruler that you wrote on, uh, you, you carved into the uh, occlusal rim. And we can measure cuspid to cuspid on the occlusal rim and then go to the uh, tooth chart and it'll tell us exactly what size tooth to use. So look at the upper arch here. This is, it looks pretty much, looks like a central. You got the cervical area on, on, the, on the top here. Let's just pre pretend that it's a, it, you know, it's a tooth here. And yet this is a nice square tapering arch. So I was use a square tapering central. This is more of a square, uh, more of an ovoid type of arch. So I would use an ovoid type tooth on this one. So, so and then we have the concerns of width of the six anteriors, the shape, the shape of the centrals, and also the shade. So usually facial form equals tooth form. That's so why I'm going to divide this uh, face right down the middle here. You can see the occlusal, uh, the pupil line is equal to the occlusal plane. And we have our midline and our cuspid line. So we get all this information from you at the, uh, at the, at the operatory and you send it to the laboratory on the occlusal rim 
we'll be able to, to use those anatomical landmarks and the information you gave us a little bit better. So tooth form equal function, uh, face form. So um, if the square, square face, square tapering, central square tapering, square ovoid face, ovoid tooth, and so on. These are some old slides, but I really like to utilize these just to show that you know a lot of people use this reference to as a reference tool. And also the tips of the canines are really equal to the width of the nose and the widths of the, fil of the fil centrals are equal to the width of the filtrum. So uh, that's some more information. So we have all these anatomical landmarks to choose from to choose denture teeth. And that's the way I've been doing it all these years. You know, the shape of the model and some of the information you give me on the occlusal rim really works out well. We want to set the denture teeth to replicate nature, a nice harmonious and aesthetic effect. And we want to use the correct denture teeth too. Homogenous material throughout the whole tooth, high mechanical strength, tissue friendly, plaque resistant, color stable, and chip free grinding. And we want the same size as natural teeth. So I want, I want to use a denture teeth, but that tooth that looks like natural tooth morphology. And I talk about lingual anatomy, you know, on anterior teeth, this really helps with patient with phonetics. So we try to choose a, a denture tooth, even on the digital side, when we mill our denture teeth, it's, uh, you know, it's, we want something with lingual anatomy so that it's, uh, the patient can have better phonetics. We want something that's gonna have aid in chewing and swallowing and tear that food apart. So, so the anterior is positioned individually and parallel to the pupil line and the lower incisal edges are parallel to the upper incisal edges. We want to determine the type of occlusal scheme, as we mentioned earlier, 72% of laboratories are using semi-anatomical or anatomical teeth. So, and this is just a picture of the uh, different occlusal schemes you see here. And with lingualized occlusion, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but uh, different degrees of teeth, usually the smaller the ridge, the less degree of cuspal inclination and the greater the ridge, the greater the degree of cuspal inclination. But it's also patient preference also. A lot of older patients can't tolerate a, a, um, a physiological centriculation where you have contact on both arches and the anterior and it's too, too tight and there's too much of a high cuspal inclination. So you might have to go a little bit lower. So instead of a 33 degree cuspal inclination, you might have to go with a 20 degree or even a 15 degree. I've gone as far as 10 degree on uh, with that too. So we want to align those occlusal surfaces towards the center of the cranium. And the only time I don't do that is that when I don't have that curve of Wilson is when I'm utilizing lingualized occlusion. So I'm not going to have a curve of Wilson. I'm going to have a curve of speed. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the lingual of the, of the lingual cusp of the upper teeth, posterior teeth to go right into the central fossa of the lower. And it's going to relieve any off, off axis stress on the, on the ridge. Or if it's an implant case, it's going to relieve that stress on the implant. So the actual inclination of the posterior is centered to the cranium. And let's check our notes here. I want to check, make sure the central fossa of the posterior teeth are on the ridge. If you remember earlier, when I mentioned about an unstable lower denture, a lot of times that's because the, tent, that's the uh, teeth aren't set on the ridge on the lower. We want to check for our vertical inclination of the posterior teeth. That's our curve of, Wilson, uh, curve of speed and our curve of Wilson. Quick check here. There's a curve of speed from buccal to lingual. I'm Carver Wilson rather from buccal lingual and curve of speed from anterior to the posterior. So you want a nice harmonious transition to the posteriors, as we see here. And the lingualized occlusion, as you can see at a lingual cusp of the upper going to the central fossa of the lower, that's going to eliminate that stress on the upper. So, and it's for the full denture patient also, even in addition to the, to the uh, um, implant patient. So we want to, you know, it's a reduction of forces, but it's a transfer to the denture rest uh, during the rest area during mastication and the underlying lying bone structure and oral mucosa. So, and this potentially may reduce sore spots. Okay, and it's also for implants. And the buccal aspect is a little flared out, so it pushes the cheek away and have less cheek biting. And there's your final setup here, and the, the final wax setup here. So. Let's get into, we have, uh, yep, we just have enough time here. We're going to talk about fabricating a printed denture. So let's talk about that a little bit now. And the next uh, version, part two, we'll talk about uh, mill dentures. So fabricating a printed denture, we're going to talk about the Lucitone printed denture. So let's talk about digitation, case design, the printed triumph, like we covered earlier, and the printed final denture. So the first thing we do is today's case digitation. We enter all the information on the patient into the uh, information on the computer, and we put that information into the computer. Um, and you know, we, we choose that's going to be a D, uh, uh, Lucitone digital denture. And uh, then we're ready to scan. So we're going to scan the model or the final impression. And most of the time in the laboratories, we're going to be scanning the model. And you can see the details. Look at the details on the left-hand side here on the model. So, I mean, you can capture every single detail and any, every anatomical landmark. So 
this is why the fit is, I believe, is, is, is better on a digital denture than it is on a conventionally processed denture. So we get all this great information. And what you see on the screen is what you get pretty much in the final denture, a mill denture or printed denture. So now we're doing case digitation. We also have to scan the bite. And we do this in the laboratory. And there's a number of ways you can do this. You could put little dimples in the model and put, that, put this into the, for instance, the E3 scanner and scan that bite. It just helps with the uh, alignment of the bite registration. What I do is I not only put uh, those little dimples in there, you can also just uh, use a scan spray. And this is what I do. You know, I took this off a magnetic articulator. I use a scan spray and I put it into the three-shaped E3 scanner and I scan the bite registration. And you can use rubber bands to hold this together too. And it, that helps also. I'm gonna show a little video here of how we scan the bite registration. So, so this is held together with a, a couple of rubber bands. You see the little indents in the model that's going to line this up correctly. It's going to come up on the screen. We have a nice scan of the upper and lower occlusal registration. That'll be merged with the impression and then we're ready to design our, our denture. So what's great about the uh, digital denture also is the articulation with centric and lateral adjustments. You know, the virtual articulate allows for centric, centric and lateral excursions, therefore saving you the dentist's valuable chair time on adjustments. So let's check it out here. I'll see how, how we can uh, uh, do this adjustments automatically in the software. So it's showing us all the high contact points here and uh, doing the occlusal adjustments. It's, it's gonna check for working and balancing and automatically uh, adjust that in the final denture. So digital denture setups, the digital articulation, the impressions are digitally articulated to the bite registration using special software. And that digital tooth setup is, you know, denture teeth are placed following the arch shape and bite registration. We have full arch setups can come into play. So it's, it's amazing how accurate it is and how easy it is. And you can adjust these teeth. I'm going to show more of the adjustment of these teeth when you're, when you're doing digital articulations in the second part of the seminar when we uh, talk about that next month. So the vertical height can be adjusted in, in the software to open and close the bite if necessary. There's a full arch uh, setup, as you see on the right hand side here. And the software is reasonable and can be modified using the software tools. And using the software tools, every aspect of the digital wax can be adjusted also. So we can contour these, even for the uh, printed try-in, we can contour the printed try-in, we can contour that final denture. So there's really no finishing, just all we have to do is polishing. So we can do uh, uh, accommodate for tissue shape and border contours also. So once we have the completed denture design, we're ready to print that try-in or go to completion. So we're ready to we print that denture try-in and then we send that to you at the dental office. And with the Lucitone printed, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's a monolithic try-in, but they come in different shades also, A1 to, uh, to, uh, to a bleach shade. So uh, any adjustments, you can mark it with a Sharpie. You can grind down the posteriors to take a new bite. And if that doesn't fit correctly, you can also take a new washed impression inside that printed try-in. And we can scan that and merge it into the original file. How do we make a print to try and look more natural? This is more for us at the laboratory side. I'm a fanatic when it comes to natural looking try -ins. So what I did, you know, you can either do something like this and take a lot of time and do denture based staining, which is not really not feasible. I mean, you can do it, it's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna be more expensive. All I do is just take some hot colored, aesthetic colored waxes and go over the whole nicely contoured uh, printed try -in. And this is how we get a nice aesthetic look on a printed try -in. So I'd rather have that, some of the wax on there, for, for, you know, just for aesthetics, for the patient and for you to see in the, uh, in the dental office. So, and then I contour it correctly. So we have a nice contoured uh, wax triangle with these different colored waxes and, uh, and they're very aesthetic looking and ginger, it matches the ginger shades too. So now we're ready to print the denture. So it comes back from you and uh, you get, give us a call and say, hey, you know, Dennis, uh, uh, everything looked great on the, on the try-in. We're ready to go to a final denture, uh, final process. So this is how we're going to be printing the denture. So we did the scan and design already. We're going to send it information over to the carbon printer, which we use for the dental, uh, the denture, uh, Lucitone denture. We do something called wash and recycle, diffusing, curing, and finish. I'm going to elaborate on this now. So these are the five steps we do, uh, we utilize for making a digital denture. So the printed denture base, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it really comes in really nice shades now. We've got the original shades of Lucitone all the way to dark red, reddish pink. So we, we have five different shades now, which is look, it looks really natural. So we're setting up the printer now. We're pouring the material into the printer, and then we're sending the information from the uh, three shape the scanner and computer over to the printer, the carbon printer, and then we're ready to print. So as you can see, you can do a number of dentures at one time here. 
And once they come out, we're going to take those buckle supports off uh, of the denture. We're going to leave those lingual supports on the, on the denture because the denture is not fully cured yet. And what we're going to do now is clean it up with some denatured alcohol. They call it car washing. Clean it up nicely, blow it off, and now we're ready to assemble our denture. And what we're going to utilize is actual, uh, actual denture teeth. We can also mill denture teeth also uh, with the newer materials out. They're, they're, they're getting better with the milled, milled uh, denture teeth, uh, especially with Ivoclar. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next webinar. But you know, the, as far as tooth collection goes, the three-shape design software has the characterization points set to indicate the position of rectal roller pads, canine points, ridge points, and that coupled with the use of pound triangle, uh, it couples with that and allows the software to pick the mold for us. So there's no guesswork in picking the correct mold. So now, Instead of doing what we did before, when I talked about the, uh, the shape of the upper arch, this does it for us. There have been instances where I do change the mold though, and uh, it's a different, I want a different mold, you're allowed to do that. But we use IPN 3D digital denture teeth. And <clears throat> excuse me, at this point, you can see this articulation key, this, it, it, this software is so in, uh, in, involved and it actually looks at all the anatomical landmarks and picks the right denture tooth by utilizing this articulation key. And these are all the mold choices we have. And they keep on adding new mold, mold choices also with this, uh, this tooth line. So the first thing we do, we're gonna uh, use a, a conditioner. We look a liquid, we condition the teeth. So it bonds really well to the denture base. And we're gonna put that on a warmer. And then we're gonna use a, something called a Fuse 2 material. And we're gonna incorporate these denture teeth into that, those sockets. And they fit perfectly into the sockets. We light cure it for a couple of seconds. And then we add the rest of the denture teeth here. And then we're ready to, after we use the Fuse 3 material, which is a material that uh, fills in any voids or bubbles, and we go pretty much interproximally and around the cervical, we're ready to final cure the teeth. And that goes for the post-curing, which is about 20 minutes. And then we can post-cure it. And then after it's post-cured, we take it out of the, uh, uh, the post-curing light cure system, and we cut off the supports. And pretty much all we have to do is cut the supports off and polish, and maybe uh, smooth down those supports a little bit more. And there's your finished denture. So we've got a great printed denture with uh, Lucitone teeth, IPN teeth, and the fit's gonna be phenomenal. So these are all the different steps here. You do save time with this material. I don't have time to go into all the different uh, aspects of the time though, but uh, we can print up to eight bases in about two hours. So uh, really good, good uh, features and benefits on this material. So here's some of the feature ben and benefits. You know, analog, we have that excessive chair time. Numerous adjustments and consistency with occlusion. I'm not saying this happens all the time, but it does happen quite a bit if the cases aren't uh, properly planned or, or processed correctly or you know, fabricated correctly. And with the Lucitone printed, we have a reduced chair time, little to no adjustments, digital pre-occlusion, better patient acceptance, peace of mind, and a digital file is available anytime. So if that patient loses it or the dog eats that denture, uh, you, you give us a call at the laboratory, we can print the new denture uh, pretty quickly. So. And what I like about this material too, looking at all the features and benefits, there's something called a BAM factor on this print, printed Lucitone denture. It's called body activated material. So when the denture is placed in the mouth, the strength increases from 1500 joules per square meter to 3100 joules per square meter and with resistance to breakage. So the longer it's in the mouth, the more high impact resistance it has. So it's great, you know, and, the, and I think that's one of the best features of this printed material. So. And then we're using printed techn technology for hybrid transitionals. We can talk about this more when we get into our uh, implant dentures, but uh, we're actually utilizing the surgical guide now to have these access holes already pre-drilled. So when you do these chair side conversions, everything is there for us. And we don't have to worry about spending so much time with uh, placing those temporary cylinders in the uh, uh, hybrid type denture. And as you can see here, it's printed. We have all the uh, holes in the denture already for a nice, uh, um, you know, hybrid type case, we can do chair side conversion fairly quickly. So, so with that, um, that's the end of part one of this series. We have, uh, the next one is going to be really good also. It's, we have a lot of information in the second part, but at this point, if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, I'd be glad to take it. I really thank you for your attention this morning. I know it's early and uh, we had a lot of information I gave you, but uh, please feel free to ask any questions and I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be glad to answer them for you. And also I wanted to put up on the screen here, this is Adam's uh, email address and my email address and more questions and information. And there's the email address that uh, um, the website address that Adam mentioned earlier. So, so we have any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for sharing all this information. Um, as you can Welcome. see, 
um, to, to the participants, as you can see, Dental Services Group is not just your restorative partner. Um, we are a true dental partner moving forward um, today, tomorrow, and for the future. A lot of the technology advancements that Dennis spoke about, this has taken months, if not years, for us to analyze. Um, we have lots of manufacturers that want to that want to bring products out into the market through DSG, but we go through a very comprehensive process before we roll anything out to the public through DSG because we do value um, your partnership and how you support us. So please know that when we bring something to market, it has been vetted uh, immensely. That being said, I know that you all need to get uh, moving and start seeing patients on the floor. So without further ado, um, we are gonna close out this meeting, but before that, on behalf of myself, Dennis, Jessica, and Dental Services Group, we wanna wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. We wish you all a very safe and healthy holiday. Come back, keep on working, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. Thank you so much for your time this morning and your continued support. Have a wonderful day and please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care now. Thanks for joining us.